Hey guys, and welcome back to the next part of Action Script 3 Game Design. So, where we left off last time is we finished getting our enemies on screen. So, they basically created themselves, or they spawned every one second, and they traveled across the screen, and then they died. So, they killed themselves off, and we had that up and running. So, what we need to do now is to get our missiles to connect with our enemies. So we need to do a collision test between all our missiles that are on screen and all our enemies that are on screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my game loop in my first game uh, document class. I'm going to create a new function for this. So I'm going to call it check missiles hits enemy. So you can call it whatever you want, but that's a pretty descriptive of what we're doing in this function. So let's create that function in Flash Develop. So what we need to do here is we need to do a double for loop. So I want to do a little bit of theory first so we can see what's going on. So let's assume we've got four missiles on the screen at once. Okay, we've mashed our spacebar. We've got four missiles traveling up the stage. Missile 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now these live in the array at 0, 1, 2, and 3 of our missile array. So in the first loop, which is the I loop, we're going to be looping through all these missiles and getting the current missile at each counter point. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Now let's assume that there's four enemies on screen as well. We've got enemy 0, 1, 2, and 3. So they're traveling on the screen. We need to test if missile 0 is hitting with any one of these enemies. So not just missile 0 with enemy 0. Because what happens if the first missile hits enemy 3? We want a collision to happen there as well. So we're going to create a second loop inside of the first one called the J loop. So the first set, when I is 0, we're going to test missile 0 with enemies 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then as soon as this J loop completes, it's going to go to the next one in the I loop. And it's going to test missile 1 with enemy 0, 1, 2, and 3 and so on and so on. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So let's start coding that up. I'm going to go back to our function here. So the first thing we need to do is loop through all our current missiles. So I'm going to create a same for loop that we did for um, check missiles off screen where we created this for loop in our missile array. And I know this is not going to be the most optimized game right now because we're creating a second for loop which is basically doing the same thing as this for loop down here. We will come back, we will optimize it, so don't worry about that for now. So create a for loop and we're going to make this loop our i loop. So create a new variable for i, data type to an integer and set it to zero. So when i is less than our a missile array dot length, let's increment i. So the first thing we want to do in this missile loop is get our current missile in the loop. So create a new variable for this called current missile. And that's going to be an MC missile data type. And we're going to be grabbing this from our missile array at whatever position I is up to. So cool, we've got our current missile. So now inside this for loop, we need to create another for loop which is going to loop through all our enemies. So let's set that up. Loop through all our enemies. So that's going to be a for loop. Now we can't use i inside here because once you've already defined a variable in a function, you can't redefine it. You can only set it to something else. So that's why we're calling this j for the second loop counter. And that's going to be an integer. We're going to start that off at zero. So this time when j is less than our a enemy array. We'll check the length, so how many objects are in the enemy array. We'll step through them one by one. So now we're inside the enemy loop, 
we need to get the current enemy in the loop. We'll get the current enemy in the J loop. So in the I loop. So let's just clarify that a bit more. So just like I showed you here, we're at um, I equals zero. Let's assume that in here. And our current missile is missile zero. So now once we've got our current missile, we're going to run another loop and it's going to jump through all our enemies. So here is where we're going to get our current enemy. That's going to be an MC enemy data type. And that's going to be equal to our enemy array and whatever counter J is up to. So assume there's four enemies in enemy array. It's going to go um, enemy 0, 1, 2, and 3. So now we need to test if this current missile is hitting this current enemy. And fortunately, there's something that's built into Flash which allows us to do just that. So let's test if our current missile is hitting our current enemy. So the method that's built in to any display object, so a sprite, a graphic, um, a text field, for example, anything that you can see on the stage and that has an instance name that you can target, there's a method you can use called hit test object. So let's take, we'll test if our current missile, if that is hit testing an object of our current enemy, and just put another bracket in here. So if this if statement equals true, if our current missile is hitting our current enemy, then let's get rid of our missile and let's get rid of our enemy because they've collided, we don't need them on the stage anymore, so let's just blow them both up. So let's remove the missile first. So there's two things we need to do when we're removing the missile. We need to one, remove the missile from the stage and to remove the missile from our missile array. And likewise with our enemy, we need to remove the current enemy on the stage. And we need to remove the current enemy from our array. Our A enemy array. Okay, so those four things, they'll pretty much do what we need to get the missile and the enemy off the stage. So let's fill in the code for that. So to remove the current missile, we're going to target our current missile. And we have a handy little method that we built for that called destroy missile. So let's run that. That'll remove it from the stage and stop the event listener. And then let's remove it from the array. So our A missile array, let's splice out whatever position in the array we were up to. So I, which will give us the position because that's the counter we're currently up to in the loop. And we just want to remove one missile, which is the current one. So same deal with the enemy. We can take our current enemy and destroy the enemy. And then finally get our A enemy array and splice out whatever current enemy we're up to. So this will be in the J loop. Remember our enemies are looping through J, our missiles are going through I. Cool, so that's looking pretty decent. Let's save this and give it a test and see how it works. So here's our game. If I fire a missile, come on, hit one of them. There we go. Okay, so our missiles have been destroyed and so are our enemies. This is obviously a little bit too easy. 
but you know, we're not working on game um, balancing just yet. We just want to get the basic skeleton of the game up and running. So there's our collisions working away. So what next? Let's have a look. So you know what? Let's make our enemies explode when a missile hits them. So, okay, it's about ten and a half minutes. Yeah, we'll do that in the next tutorial. So when a missile hits our enemy, we're going to create a new movie clip. And what's going to happen is we're going to position this movie clip where our enemy is about to die. And we'll make it animate from there as well. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that one.